07, turn right, heading 185, reduce speed 182 or not. 185 on the heading 180 on the speed off there, 007. Speed at 124, reduce speed 160 or not, before do you mean? Hello there guys, Matt here, hope you're all well and welcome to my prepared V3 tweak and settings guide for, well, 2016 technically because the year's almost over and I don't foresee things to change. The idea of this video is to give you guys an insight into the settings that I use to make my videos and I'll also run through specific add-ons which I use to make things look pretty nice. Now before we get started, I will say if you're here just for configs, I'll leave all the links below so you don't have to watch the next 5 or 10 minutes. And of course if you have any suggestions of things that I should use or add-ons I should get to enhance my experience within P3D V3, then absolutely let me know in the comments section below. So to kick start, everyone always wants to know what clouds I use. Now, clouds for me have always been a big thing because I'm a guy that likes a natural set of clouds. Yeah, you can all laugh at that. But seriously, there are so many cloud add-ons out there which make the clouds look too cartoony, too unrealistic, not natural. There's always like some spruced up Photoshop attempt at clouds and I never really like most of the clouds are on the market. However, when Rex released their soft clouds, I decided that I was gonna give them a go and I wasn't disappointed. Now, I've been saying since it was released that I've been using set 11 and that is mostly true until the service pack came out. And now just to spice it up a bit, now and again I switched to set 16. So either 16 or 11 will do the trick and make your clouds look like what you see in my videos. Okay, moving on to sky and sun textures. Now, a lot of people think I use Rex, but I don't, not for the sky or for the sun, or for the water for that matter. I actually use the freeware available cloud and sun sets that are on Avsim. I'll leave the link below. It's the same set that I used in my how to make FSX look amazing for free video last year. Nothing has changed. I guess it may just look a little bit different in P3D V3 because you have the ability to have HDR lighting, which I do use. So maybe that will put your mind at rest. But honestly, the conspiracy for me having some sort of elitist, unavailable to the public texture set for clouds and the sky is, well, complete rubbish. I use the ones that I've used for the last, I'm going to say, two years. Next up is something worth mentioning. I get a lot of comments on my YouTube video asking me how I get all the trees. Why are there so many trees? People can't seem to get the same sort of level of trees without taking a huge FPS hit. And that is thanks to the guys over at Orbex. Now this add-on's been out for quite a while. It's called FTX Trees. And essentially what it does is replaces the default trees within P3D and FSX and then some. It's an awesome add-on and it really is great on FPS. There's no difference. They manage to model trees which do not touch your performance whatsoever. Next up is my weather engine. I still use Active Sky Next. We're on Service Pack 4 now. And well, I don't really think I've changed the settings. I'm going to leave the Active Sky Next options.ini file or whatever it is, the config for it, in the video description below. However, I don't think it's changed from the last one. So if you're expecting some epic Active Sky Next settings, I don't really have any. I just have the visibility reduced and the cloud layers reduced and it seems to work just fine. Okay, moving on to the actual in-sim settings. Although I'll leave my configs below, which will directly import these settings into P3D, I guess I will run through some of the options for you. So first of all, on the graphics setting, I obviously have a GTX 980 Ti. That specification has not been hidden from you. You all know what specs I have on my computer. And I run at a resolution of 1080, so 1920 by 1080. I turn FX AA off because for some reason that causes blurries for me and it makes everything in P3D just look like I need some sort of cataract surgery. I have MSAA at 8, I have the texture filtering at 8, and I also have the texture res at 2K. Now you can bump that up to 4K if you want, but I'm not brave enough, so 2K is fine. I have V-Sync off, and I also have the frame rate at unlimited. That allows me to make 60 FPS videos. Hardware tessellation is on because it was on by default, and I just left it there. And I also have uh, MIPMAP VC panels checked. The 2D transparency is zero because I don't use 2D panels and also the wide view aspect ratio is unchecked which is interesting because in FSX I used to have that on all the time but I removed it in P3D and then compensated for the loss of the wide view by zooming out in EasyDoc and then setting the default zoom to 0.40. 
Okay, next is the scenery tab, and well, as you can see for yourself, level of detail radius is max, tessellation factor is also on ultra, mesh resolution is just one notch from the top at two meters, and the resolution of the textures are seven centimeters. You want land detail textures ticked, and then the scenery objects at the bottom, the complexity to be extremely dense. The vegetation density can be all the way up if you have FDX trees, that basically just spams the environment with trees and kind of, it's almost a placebo effect, it makes it look like there's more autogen than there actually is because there's just a lot of trees and very little buildings and then the buildings themselves I have on dense. Coming over to the right the water and bathymetry which is a new thing with P3D. Uh, the water detail for me is on a high. Uh, for V3 at the moment there's a bug you can't have it on ultra otherwise it causes some weird and wonderful graphic problems. The bathymetry is unchecked and the reflections are on the clouds, the user vehicle and the terrain and nothing else. Special effects both on medium you can chuck them up to high but watch your frame rates dip. Up next, the lighting effects. Well, I have HDR turned on and I think it looks fantastic. My HDR lighting settings are as follows. This gives it, I feel, the most realistic look without any bloom or too much, really. Because the problem is if you have bloom all the way turned up, then most of the gauges look like someone's shining a laser pen at them and that's not great. So, brightness is on 0 0.8, bloom 0 0.9 and the saturation is 0 0.8. Both the things underneath checked for landing lights and lens flare. And then the shadows, I have the quality on medium and then we want to enable terrain to receive shadows. The cast distance for the terrain shadows is on 20,000 meters. The cloud shadow is also on 20k and the object shadow is on 3k and the checkboxes for cast and receive are internal vehicle on both, external vehicle on both and then you just want to cast them on the sim objects. You don't really need to receive them because that can cause problems with AI and other things. Up next is the weather tab and it's the same in FSX. Active Sky primarily controls this but if you you want to just set your settings in case you're not using Active Sky. Uh, cloud draw distance at 90 mi. Cloud coverage density is at maximum. And then, of course, volumetric fog with detailed clouds. Thermal visualization is set to none, although you can try natural as well. It's the whole, you know, when you're trying to find a thermal if you're gliding or something like that, it's the way it depicts those. Now, I haven't been gliding in the sim for about a year and a half, so I mean, it doesn't really make any difference to me. Simulation settings, well, you can just leave that as it is. I just put the thing to no change. You can disable the turbulence and thermal effects in aircraft if you want but then if you do go gliding well you won't go gliding because you won't be able to pick up any thermals last but not least is the traffic settings now i use vatsim for online traffic so i have all of the aviation traffic to zero if i make a video offline then i'll knock the tra airline traffic density up to 20 percent leave everything else at zero but by majority it stays at zero uh, the land and sea traffic as you can see road vehicles 30 ships and ferries 15 and same for leisure boats the road traffic doesn't seem to make much of a difference in performance if you remember on in fsx if you turn the road vehicles up then you would lag like crap that's not the case in p3d so you can pretty much just ramp it up to whatever you want 30 is a good number for me it looks pretty nice and it merges well with all of the roads vehicle labels well i was going to insult people then but i won't if you want to see traffic labels and stick them on be my guest i don't have them on because it ruins the realism for me i mean you're not going to be sat in real world flying a plane and all of a sudden in the sky you see a red label telling you who they are and where they're going yeah it's a bit weird isn't it Okay, so that's pretty much my P3D settings in a nutshell. I will leave all the configs below. Most of this is actually taken from a guy called Rob Ainsco, I think you pronounce his name. I've been following his videos on YouTube for about a year now since he's on the uh, Lockheed Martin P3D beta team and he posts a lot of tweaks. Now he has a monstrous computer. He's running like 12 Titans or something and like 55,000 gig of RAM. So his settings are always ridiculously overpowered but he does have a nice website where he shows you the settings of what he can achieve so if you have a ridiculously overpowered pc and you want to try them then i'll leave the link to his website below a quick note about nvidia inspector i ditched using that a long time ago because for some reason in p3d version 3 i don't need to use it using the settings that i have within the sim are good enough to be able to achieve what i would like to see on my screen so i don't really use that anyway i hope that helped you small tutorial slash guide on how to get the most out of your p3d if you have any suggestions or any tweaks then let me know underneath if you're having any problems then post underneath not necessarily i'll help you but i'm sure there'll be a lot of people out there that read it and will also help you like people have done in previous videos okay so that's it thanks for watching hope you learned something hope it helped you and until the next video i bid you farewell Bye bye